Good morning. <laughs> oh, I got the candles burning well again this morning. And the lights are burning all over the world. Today's title is 2012, which I think I'm going to probably be starting with that every day. Maybe not, but <laughs> that's where I've been going lately. A time to separate the wheat from the chaff in our minds. Have no doubt about it. This is a time for shifting. Or sifting, not shifting. Sifting. We have each experienced highs and lows, challenged by the obvious contradictions of human life. We have been pulled this way and that by never-ending inconsistencies. Yet no matter how hard we have tried to get a handle on it all, the world has continued to spin out of control for individuals and the collective. No matter how it appears, we are separating the anomalies of our own beliefs and perceptions and moving towards unity. It's taking place in our minds, but coming from our hearts and guts. For someone that teaches unity consciousness, as I have been at least attempting and doing my best to continue to do. It's strange that I talk about a time of separation. But I'm recognizing that the separation is occurring. It's occurring in my own mind as I have the opportunity to meditate and look at things very, very closely. As I choose not to try to silence the cacophony of thoughts and feelings that arise on a daily basis in my life. I spend time looking at them, feeling them, mulling them over in my mind. Where am I consistent? Where am I inconsistent? What are the consequences of my thoughts and my actions? I look at these things and I'm not alone. I'll bet you this process is going on with more and more people as each day passes. As more people awaken to the reality of the insanity of the world that we've been living in. And in many cases, the insanity of our own individual lives. As those we've tried to love, we've hurt because we didn't understand what love was. We thought love was about someone else being able to agree with us and meet our need to feel secure, to feel safe. But we learned that those that we loved didn't do that. What they did instead was show us a mirror. That the reason we were seeking that was because we weren't finding it in our own self. And so we were seeking it out there. And so we realized that the love that we thought we were experiencing wasn't really love. It was some kind of an illusion or a delusion. Worked for a while temporarily, but then it fell away. Because the universe is bringing us to a point in the evolution of our consciousness where we literally have the opportunity to see both sides almost simultaneously, both sides of our self, the shadow and the longing for wholeness, the longing for real love, love without condition, love that accepts us just as we are, love that hears us, love that allows us expression in every way possible. 
and we're being given that kind of love by the cosmos. We may not recognize it as such until we do, and we will. But love has given us over, over our lifetimes, over millennia, has given us the opportunity to explore the what ifs. What if there was no God? What if there was no purpose? What if there was no meaning to anything? What if the world is just an insane joke and life is just more of that insanity? But it's not. You see, we're coming to the realization even the rationalists that want to put it all together have to be coming to the realization that there is something, something that seems to be almost manipulating this whole thing. And I'm not talking about the cabal or the dark forces of our world. I'm talking about a higher purpose, a higher meaning. The Creator getting us to look at our own creation. For the Creator empowered us, endowed us with certain rights. And they're not just rights. Their abilities, their talents, gifts, and abilities to create a world that would answer the question, what if there was no God? What if I could do whatever I wanted? What kind of a world would that be if I could go off on a wild goose chase and pursue pleasure and pursue wealth and pursue power? and pursue anything my heart seemed to desire at the given time. What if I could do that? What would be the consequences of that journey? Hmm. And so we embarked upon human life, didn't we? The prodigal children, we went out into the far country called Earth. At the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy, on an insignificant planet, but yet beautiful. And amidst all the beauty of this planet, we still managed to create a pig pen. We still managed to create horror and terror. We still managed to create insanity. Why? What did we do wrong? We didn't do anything wrong. We explored. We explored the possibilities in an attempt to answer the question, what if there was no meaning? What if nothing made sense? And so we separated this from that. And this time, 2012, we're being given the opportunity to bring all of this journey together in our individual lives and in our collective experience, to bring it together and to look at the, the pieces that we've segmented and separate it off. This is a time of separation, the wheat from the chaff, but it's taking place in our minds, or more precisely, in our conscious awareness. This is the evolution of human consciousness that's going on. This is the evolution of consciousness itself. It's not just human. It's extraterrestrial. It's cosmic in nature. It's going on all over the place. We are reaching a crescendo, a climax in this journey whether you want to believe it's all going to happen in 2012 is irrelevant. What, what I believe about it is irrelevant. What any of us believe is irrelevant. The relevancy is that it's happening, and it's happening with, greater, with a greater exclamation point being placed always upon it. As we get to explore this wide range of possibilities, are we going to destroy the planet? Or are we going to create heaven on earth? What are the possibilities? Are we going to continue to live alone and separate and fight for our individual right to be wrong? Are we going to fight for our separation and our divisions? Are we going to fight for our religions and our political ideologies? Are we going to fight for nations that war against other nations? Are we going to fight in relationships with our children, with our spouses, 
with those that we are in business with? Are we going to continue the warfare or are we going to make a new choice? Hmm. I wonder what we're deciding. I see what we're deciding. I know what I'm deciding. I don't have all the answers. So I'm deciding to humble myself and say, God, whatever you are, whoever you are, keep on working in me. I see it. I recognize that you're trying to get me to look at this more deeply, that you're trying to get me to own and take responsibility for my own life and my own choices. You're trying to make me see the consequences of things that I believed that didn't go where I thought they were going to go. You're empowering me with a whole wide range of feelings. Not that any of them are bad, but some of them feel very bad. The sadness and sometimes even the rage. And I feel it. I feel it very deeply, God. And I want to be who I am. But I'm recognizing that the greatest choice I can make is the choice to love, to accept what is, to be me, and to allow others to be who they are, where they are in their own process. Because I'm learning to give myself the grace that you've always given me. And I'm learning to recognize that we really are one. And there really is only love. There really is. My gut tells me that. My heart tells me that. And my mind is telling me that too. As I separate all of these things, the wheat from the chaff in my own mind, as I separate all of these events, all of these experiences, all of these circumstances, as I look at them, as I look at what's going on in me and my reaction to them, my responses to them, and I recognize it going on around me, in other people, in the world. Things that we thought we understood, we don't. Things that we thought we knew, we're realizing that, hey, maybe we were wrong. Maybe it's not the way I was told. Maybe it's not the way I thought it was. And so we're be being given, as in this period of separation, of apparent separation, we're being given a new curiosity, the heart of a child who lives in wonder at what is possible. What, what kind of trouble can I get into today? <laughs> and sometimes little toddlers, <laughs> they really know how to get in trouble, don't they, in their exploration. But we do that as adults, just not quite as obvious as it is with children. But we're on this journey. We're on this journey and we're coming home. And we're preparing the world for something brand new, something not experienced in a long, long, long time, so long ago that we've not remembered the previous golden age. But we're coming upon another golden age in 2012. We're at the threshold of it. As the world around us disintegrates, as our lives seem to be challenged at every angle, as the old is burned away, the dross is consumed, and we're coming forth as pure gold. We're coming, we're rising as the phoenix from the ashes, a new humanity being birthed by Mother Earth and by the cosmos. The divine marriage is taking place within me and within you. The marriage of the light and the dark, the masculine and the feminine, the positive and the negative. All of the opposites are being conjoined inside of our hearts, in our very soul. And we, we, you and me, we are becoming what we were destined to be. Adult, mature, children of God, masters in our own right. Yes, you and me, we are masters. 
We are masters in our own right. We are physical angels culminating this human experience and coming into something beautiful and brand new as we separate and then unify ourselves in love. It's a mass awakening that's happening. And I thank you for being part of my journey. May you be blessed today. Namaste.